Hi, my name is Leah and I'll be your guide. This video is about using the scroll app on smartphones connected to your Google account. As you may already know from the introduction video, scroll is a direct replacement of the very basic contacts apps that are built into your iPhone and Android. Scroll starts working with all of the people already on your phone immediately because both of them share the same Google contacts database. For the same reason, I can continue using Messages, FaceTime, and Dialer on iPhone and their twin apps on Android just like before, or directly from Scroll because it is so much faster and more convenient. Sending text messages is a good example. First, I tap the star icon to open the favorites group, which I use as a speed dial. This is Konstantin Monasterski, the founder of Scroll. To send him a text, I tap the Messages app icon to open a list of commonly used SMS templates. Next, I tap I'll be late, select the length of the delay, and the iPhone's Messages app opens up with a personalized text. Constantine, sorry, I'll be 15 minutes late. Done in 16 seconds. Without talking, it's even faster than Siri, which I can't use when in public places or during a Zoom meeting. Scroll is also integrated with all of the popular messaging apps on my left. This integration is a must for me because Constantine prefers WhatsApp, Paul favors Skype, Jessica insists on Twitter, Wilfred is on Messenger, Lori is exclusively on Telegram, and Walter on Signal. And of course, not only them. Since I can't remember everyone's favorite app, we've enabled Scroll to show the last one I used to contact them. This way, I can send a message, start a chat, or make a call with a single tap. To repeat the last action in the list view, I swipe to the left. Here is WhatsApp that I used recently to chat with Constantine. Alternatively, I can tap the history icon to review all of the recent contacts I've made from Scroll. A tap on any of these icons will repeat phone calls, text messages, chats, direction requests, and all other actions. I can also swipe the action record to the right to see only text messages that I've made to everyone recently, or swipe to the left to see only all actions related to Constantine. And whenever I need to get in touch with him at any other number, I open his folder and tap any of these icons to call his work or home phone numbers. Since I am already inside Constantine's folder, let me show you how I use it. Please note that for privacy reasons, all people mentioned in this demonstration are made up fictional characters. Of course, Constantine and I are real, and my personal scroll looks very similar in all other respects. I love having nice photos of everyone because they create a greater sense of connection with my family, friends, and associates. When meeting someone I know well, but I don't have their photo yet, I double tap here to open the camera app switch it to the selfie mode, and ask them to take one they will like. It's less awkward and more polite that way than asking people to pose for my address book. For the same reasons, I wouldn't take photos of anyone I don't know well. Instead, I look them up on the internet. I will use scroll on my laptop because mobile browsers don't support this type of integration. Here's how quick and simple it is. First, I select the Find Images of Konstantin Monasterski command. Next, I look for a photo I like. Click the right mouse button to open the Scroll Tools command and use the Update Photo command to return to Scroll. Finally, I adjust his photo to my liking and click the Save button. All done in just four clicks. Alternatively, I can visit Constantine's Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, or any other popular social site and take his profile photo from them. Here is how it works. I click the social icon and select a social site to find his profile. Select a matching profile. Click the scroll extension icon to open this pop-up with a photo and select the Replace Picture option. Finally, I click the Add to Scroll button to get back to it. Here is a new photo on my laptop and iPhone. Done in just four clicks. The app also added Constantine's Facebook ID to the folder, so the next time around, I can open his page with a single click. 
I often do this before contacting anyone to get updated on the goings on in their lives and break the ice with a little chit chat about them, their kids, families, and work. The next section is for phone numbers. I can add here work, extension, home, fax, and any other number a person may have. I can also prioritize these numbers for each of my contacts. Let's go to the edit mode and bring iPhone on top because that would be the first number I would call Constantine when he isn't available on WhatsApp. When the iPhone number is added, I have three options here. One for sending messages, another for making regular calls, and the last one for FaceTime. I like this flexibility because with scroll, I can send messages, make calls, and start video chats from a single place instead of using three separate apps. The next section is intended for work and personal emails. To write a new letter, I tap the Gmail icon and select the Compose New command to open it with Constantine's email address added automatically. I also can use personalized templates for sending repetitive emails in seconds. In this case, I select the Use a Template command. Templates are sorted by folders, such as invitations, recruitment letters, references requests, and similar others. Let's tap the Invitations folder and select the Christmas Party Invitation template. The app instantly opens a ready-to-send message with Constantine's email address and name in the greeting. To add a personal touch, I tap the Edit button, type Thank you for your call yesterday, update the changes, and tap the Send command. It took me just 12 seconds, including the talking. I can also use these templates to send emails to all of my contacts, any one group, or several selected people. Imagine driving to work and suddenly needing to inform your family, team, or entire company about an out of the blue flash flooding, fire emergency, road closing, or any other similar situation. Here is how I would handle it right from my phone. I would select the office group that includes all of my colleagues. Then, I would tap the Send Emails command to select the Compose option and add the message subject and dictate my message. Hi team, period. Severe flooding is expected around our office park, period. Please work from home or turn back, period. New line, be safe, exclamation point. New line, new line, Leah Maston. Finally, I tap the Done and Send commands and all 28 emails are on their way in 30 seconds. For even more preparedness, I can create a folder for emergencies and write detailed instructions for each one of them in advance. Optionally, I can add a link inside a message to let my employees confirm reading it. If someone wouldn't confirm it, I could follow up with a call or text to ensure they are safe. There are times when I need to send a message to only a few selected people. In this case, I tap here to return to the My Contacts group and tap Molly, Stephen, Victoria, and David. Next, I tap the Action menu to select the Send Emails command. Select the Invitation folder and open the Christmas Party Invitation template. Let's verify the message. Hi, Molly. Let's go to the next. Hi, Stephen. Hi, Victoria. Actually, she is away on business, so I skip her contact. Hi, David. All are good now and ready to send. Done. All perfectly personalized messages are sent in 20 seconds, right from my Gmail account. This way, their chance of ending up in spam isn't as big as with email marketing apps. Scroll is also much faster than Google Calendar for scheduling meetings. A tap on the calendar icon lets me add a new event, but I prefer doing it from my PC because it's easier on a larger display. First, I select three people who will attend a meeting. Adam Steven, Anderson Molly, Abernathy Betty. Next, I click the schedule button to open a time chart, select a business meeting template, and move the block inside the time chart. I click here to reserve the starting time and select a two hour duration of this meeting from the menu. Finally, I click the check mark to add this meeting to Google Calendar. Done. As you can see, 
Finding a good time and adding a meeting took me only 15 seconds. Let's check out this event inside Google Calendar. Here is the event name, no typing. Here are the date and times. Again, zero typing. Our office address was added automatically into the event location field. To make sure I will not miss it, three custom notifications were added automatically from the business meeting template. The green color of the event on the chart was added too, so it is easier to identify business meetings on the time chart. The event status is set to busy automatically to avoid interruptions. And here are the names and titles of all participants, also added automatically by the app. Entering an event with all of these options by hand would take me at least two minutes instead of seconds. Let's get back to scroll to see another neat shortcut. Whenever I need to reschedule any event, I click on its time block and move it to another date and time spot. And if I need more time, I just stretch the block to add 30 more minutes and save it. Done. Let's get back to Constantine's folder. The next section is intended for chat apps. Constantine uses WhatsApp, Skype, and Telegram. I can open his profile in any of these apps with a single tap. Here is WhatsApp. Here is his Skype. And here is Telegram. This approach is much faster than opening these apps directly and searching inside them for profiles. The next section is intended for business and personal websites. Here is Scroll's homepage on my laptop. To connect, I open the Scroll extension menu, click the Add Website Link command, and confirm my request. The app takes me back to Constantine's folder with his site already added here and on my iPhone. To visit this page on my phone, I tap the browser icon and the app takes me there. The next section is intended for social sites such as Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and all others. Adding them to scroll is just as easy. I've already demonstrated it when searching for photos on Facebook, but let me show it again with Twitter. I click the social icon and select the Find on Twitter command to search for Constantine's profile. Here is his profile. I click the scroll extension icon to open a pop-up with his photo. The Add to Scroll button takes me back to Constantine's folder with his Twitter ID added here. Done in just a few clicks. Whenever I want to check his Twitter profile on my phone, a single tap instantly opens it inside the Twitter app. This way, I can quickly read his most recent posts before a call or a meeting. Let's get back to scroll to next section. Here, I can add basic notes about Constantine, such as his brief bio, and any other trivia that may be helpful in the future. Google and Apple Contacts databases have room for a single note. If I need more, I can attach a Word or Google Docs document to his folder and keep my extra notes inside them. This section is intended for work, home, or any other address a person may have. When I visit our office in New Jersey, a tap on Constantine's work address lets me get instant Google Maps directions from my hotel or current location. To get back, I select the From 78 John Miller Way command and tap the Hilton Meadowlands command. Here are new directions back to my hotel. In some cities with heavy traffic, I prefer using Waze instead of Google or Apple Maps. To switch, I tap the Settings command, open the Directions and Maps section, and select the Waze app there. Alternatively, I can tap the Rides and Map menu to request an Uber or Lyft ride from my current location. It's $19.92 at this time on Uber. Let's check the price on Lyft. This time around, the price is almost the same. I love these tools because they save me a ton of time when planning my trips. They're also very helpful while traveling abroad because I can set my home address to the local hotel or Airbnb and get directions or Uber just as fast. If you ever tried to type a hotel address in a foreign language, then you know what I mean. Also, while abroad, I can use settings to select a country I am in, and the app will know how to call or text locally and back home correctly. The next section is intended for attaching actual business cards. 
Let's add Constantine's to his folder. First, I tap here and select the Take Photo command. Second, I position the camera over the card and take its picture. Finally, I use this control to resize the photo, adjust the card position with a swipe, straighten it with a rotate control, and tap the Add command to complete the process. Adding business cards may not be necessary for all people in my scroll, but I like having this option for some, and you may too. The next section is intended for relatives. Constantine is married to Tatiana. A tap on her name opens Tatiana's folder. To return to Constantine's folder, I tap the back command here. The next two sections are for Constantine's birthday and other important anniversaries in his life. I dread missing birthdays and other anniversaries of people close to me. The reminders icon lights up with a red dot in advance of pending events to ensure this never happens. Here are the two most recent expired reminders and five forthcoming. I can adjust how many reminders are displayed before and after today in the settings. I prefer having my reminders inside scroll instead of the Google Calendar not to clutter my daily schedule with personal events. A tap on the reminder lets me decide what to do with it. Send a gift, add it to the calendar, snooze it for five days, turn it off until the next year, make a call to wish a happy birthday, send an email, post a greeting on Facebook, or anything else fitting the occasion, all right from here. The remaining four sections in Constantine's folder are custom fields, web links, file attachments, and the groups that he belongs to. And there are several more options at the bottom of the folder that I can use to share his folder via AirDrop or Bluetooth, email, chats, or any other app. Show the QR code to share Constantine's vCard. To send an update request to Constantine with a link to his folder that he can update for me on his phone or computer. I can add or remove his name from the favorites group, several shortcuts to navigate long folders, and an option to delete it. If I delete anyone by mistake, I can undelete them as well. All in all, I can add up to 500 fields of information in each folder, the maximum supported by the Google Contacts database. And all of these fields will remain accessible to all other Apple, Android, and Windows apps. Let me remind you that you wouldn't need to re-enter any contact information already on your iPhone or Android phones because Scroll shares with them the same Google Contacts database. You can also send update requests to groups of people who know you well and ask them to update their folders with the most recent information. I describe how to use the update request and to add new contacts from the web, spreadsheets, databases, and other sources in the video, 10 ways of adding people to scroll without typing. It will help you do just that in almost no time. But how would you find all of that information, especially years later? Well, here is how I do it. To find Constantine while in the list view or gallery, I slide my finger along the alphabet strip. Stop on the letter M, select the second letter of his last name, and here is his record. To find anyone by their first or last name, I use the search by name option. As I type John, James, and Smith, the app will display all matching names as I type. I use the search by field command to locate anyone on a specific field. First, I select the desired field, such as the phone number, and type 201,973. Here are all of the people in these two area codes. The match any search word command lets me find all people whose name match Jim, James, and Jimmy. It's helpful when I don't remember someone's first name exactly. Of course, this search works across all fields and not just names. The match all search words command will help me find only people matching one or more search words. This way, some years later, I can easily find someone I remember meeting in New York, and his name was John. Here he is, John Bagwell. And when all else fails, I sort the list view on any available field and simply scroll 
the list in that order. Finally, when I can't recall the name of someone I met a long time ago, I open folders and keep swiping from one record to another until I reach a familiar face. Not this one. Nope. Next. No. Got it. Stephen Adams. Still, no matter how good the search is, remembering, let alone managing, even a few hundred names is hard unless you break them down into smaller groups of related people, such as family, friends, clients, or classmates, and can access these groups instantly. Creating groups is quick and simple. Let's make one for medical doctors in my scroll. First, I tap here and select the Match Any Search Word option to find everyone with the MD, DDS, DC, and DVM title. Here are 11 physicians, dentists, chiropractors, and vets found in my scroll. Next, I tap here to select the Create a Group command, type Doctors, and tap the Add button. All done in 16 seconds. The next time my dog may need a vet, I would simply go to the doctor's group and tap her name to set up an appointment. And by the way, to make sure that anyone I meet can find me just as easy as I can find them, we reinvented a traditional business card. To show mine, I turn my phone into the horizontal position, and here it is. Now, you can point your phone's camera app to the QR code and tap my name here. Then scroll down the preview and tap the Create New Contact command. Actually, I have more than one card on my phone, each one with its own settings. This is a personal card that I share with friends and family. This card is in French, and it has my hotel address in Paris to show to taxi drivers there. If I don't want to share my QR code for privacy reasons, I just tap it to show my photo instead. Also, I can swipe down like this to show my actual business card instead. It is so much fun. I'm sure you too will find these touchless cards indispensable for your work, travel, and networking in the post-COVID era. With all that contact information inside Scroll, I am naturally concerned about its privacy and security. What would happen if my phone got lost or stolen? What if it gets hacked or infected with malware? What about backups? To address these concerns, Scroll uses the same login as my Google account and an optional touch or face ID, so only I can open the app. For protection from malware and hacking, Scroll runs on the same cloud platform that manages Gmail and all other Google apps. And in case my phone or computer gets lost or stolen, all of my information is protected by Google Backup in real time. This way, I feel as secure using Scroll as the rest of my Google apps. As you can see, having Scroll on your smartphone is like having a Tesla in your driveway. The same set of four wheels, but better, faster, and smarter at everything. Please click or tap the link under the video to get your scroll now. Thank you very much for watching and happy scrolling.